everybody. Hope you've had a great week. We're continuing our series about animals in the Bible, and this week we're going to talk about ants. I have a little ant friend here and um, a little row of plastic ants lined up because you often see ants uh, marching in a line. Um, but we're going to talk about some of the unique qualities of ants today and also that ants are mentioned in the Bible. We'll get to that in a few minutes. You probably, you may have even seen an ant today. They're frequently inside our houses and our schools and sometimes in our cars. And of course, they're outside. We see them all the time outside. And it's fun to watch an ant busily going back and forth. And um, of course, we often find them at picnics where food is, where they, they love to go and gather food. Um, sometimes we think they're kind of pesty, pesky because we I want them to go away, or there are so many of them at one time. Um, sometimes they are a little bit annoying, but they're an interesting insect, and we're going to talk about them today. And here in the book, uh, this book here, it has a picture of what's underneath the ground, and you might see an ant hill, and there are lots of different compartments and tunnels. And here's just kind of a funny picture of ants carrying food, because that's something that they do too. They're, we're also going to talk about. Well, ants can be red and black and yellow and brown. They're all different kinds of ants. And they live together in a nest. And we often see in, uh, in an ant hill where the ants go in and enter their nest and lots and lots of tunnels and secret passages and interesting things underground. You may have even had or seen an ant farm, which is an interesting thing where you put between glass and you watch ants busily doing their jobs and, um, and taking care of um, storing their food and gathering their food. Well, their nests are almost like gigantic cities made from mud or dirt. In some parts of the world, we don't have these ants here, but they take the, their, the dirt and build huge towers, and the towers can be as tall as a human, as a grown person. That's really pretty, that's a lot of dirt. Um, they build these tunnels and storage rooms, and then they move around underground, and they are very busy storing their food um, for later. It says some of the tunnels that they build can be as much as a mile long. That is a really long tunnel for those ants. The most important ant in the uh, colony is called the queen, and she can lay thousands of eggs a day. I think that's why we see so many ants around. Um, but each ant in the nest has a special job, a, an important job, and they keep their nest safe and sound. Some workers bring food to the colony, and some feed and care for the young ants, and others clean the, clean the nest, and some guard against intruders. Um, and every, every colony has a scout ant, and the scout ant goes out to find food, and while they're searching for food, they leave a scent behind so he can find his way back to the colony. When he, he has found food, um, it sends out a signal to the worker ants to go get the food. You've also noticed that ants can carry a lot of, uh, a lot of weight on their backs. They maybe have seen them carrying breadcrumbs or carrying pieces of fruit even, or pieces of food. And they can carry proportionally a whole lot more than we can carry. It's amazing that, to see them work and be able to do that. Well, King Solomon in the Bible wrote about ants in Proverbs. Who would have thought that he would watch the ants in his big fancy palace and then write about them in the book of Proverbs? But this is what he said in Proverbs 6. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, and yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers its food at harvest. He said ants are wise, and we should look to them. Ants march to their nests in one long row. Each one carries a piece of food much bigger than their tiny bodies. And when the long winter arrives, the storerooms are full of food, and it's time to rest. What well, is interesting to watch ants walk along in a straight line? Once I found hundreds of ants walking in a line in one of the Sunday school rooms, and I know 
noticed what had happened is that somebody had spilled lemonade and they were marching along that line and getting a very yummy treat, this, this sweet treat of lemonade, thanks to our spill. Even though ants are much smaller than we are, and they're insects, we can still learn a lot from the ants. And here's some of the lessons that we can learn from an ant. Ants are very hardworking, and we're told to be diligent and to be hardworking. As a young person, as a child, it's important to do the work that you have with all your heart so you'll be ready for what God has for you in the future. You might think that you're small and what you're doing is, is small and maybe even seems a little insignificant, but think about the ants. One breadcrumb at a time, one piece of dirt at a time. They, they carry their food and they build their, their nest and build their colony. And so even the little things we do when we work hard are very, very important. Galatians 6, 9 says, So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. It's a good thing the ants don't give up. Ants also work together. They know their job and they work until they're finished. If you put an ant all by itself, he would not survive. We can't survive alone either. We need each other and we need to, to help each other. We do our, when we do our jobs without help and try to do it on our own, sometimes we just get too tired and sometimes we get kind of grumpy. In Galatians it says, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Another lesson that ants teach us is that it reminds us of the body of Christ, that each person has an important job. So we should respect others. And in their division of labor, some ants are assigned to some pretty lowly jobs. Apparently some of them have to clean the nest, or maybe they're just guarding the nest. And, um, but each job that, that they have is important. And in God's sight, all of us and all of our jobs are important. And then, we should learn to save for the future. Good stewardship involves the awareness that God is the owner of all, and he calls us to be wise caretakers of all that he's given us. Ants work hard to store, things, store their food for the future. They have secret tunnels and storage places for all their hard work. Well, think about this. If you had a secret tunnel or a storage room, what would you store in it? We often, we often spend a lot of time storing up treasures in our storage rooms. Part of that's important because we need to have money for food and for clothes and a place to live. But far more important is storing up our treasures in heaven. In Matthew 6, it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Amen.